Hi there everybody, in this video we are looking at the processes of inbreeding and hybridization which are both um, involved in artificial selection and selective breeding. So let's think about inbreeding first of all. Um, so if we have an individual with a recessive, homozygous recessive genotype, this individual must have inherited one recessive allele from each parent. So each parent must have at least one of those recessive alleles. They might have two of them. I'm just giving an example here as one possible way that uh, this genotype has been inherited. So therefore, if we think about this parent here, this parent has one recessive allele, so at least one of their parents must also have had it, and the same on this side. And we can go back to previous generations to show how the recessive allele has been passed um, down from generation to generation to generation until here the uh, recessive allele is expressed. What we can see here is that related individuals um, are going to have similar genotypes. So we can just see here, uh, this is just one gene, the, the A gene. Obviously individuals have got hundreds or thousands of genes. But if you've got very related individuals, it is highly likely that they are going to have alleles which are the same for uh, many of their genes. And this is where the idea of inbreeding comes in. Because inbreeding is when closely related individuals breed together. And if you look at these individuals here, um, especially if we sort of think about um, sort of one side of the family here. So these are all related to each other. And you can see there's a very high proportion of individuals there with the recessive allele. So if any of these individuals were to breed together, the chance of that recessive allele being expressed is quite high. And it's much higher than if you were to breed one of those individuals with an individual who is not related from another family, where that recessive allele may not exist at all. We can also see here, if we think about these two parents who are heterozygous, so they could have an individual who's homozygous recessive, but they could also have a, um, an offspring who's homozygous dominant um, or heterozygous. So in terms of probabilities of these two parents having offspring, 25% um, big A, big A, 25% little A, little A, 50% uh, heterozygous. So these individuals, if, you know, th these individuals are very likely to have offspring with recessive alleles. So again, if you were to breed siblings in this family, it's very likely that you would end up with um, two recessive alleles being expressed. So inbreeding is breeding related, uh, related individuals. Outbreeding is breeding individuals who are not closely related. So again, just another example. These two individuals, if they breed together, they could end up with offspring uh, with these genotypes. If you breed these two siblings together, it's very likely that you could end up, in fact, 50% likely that you end up with an individual showing the recessive, uh, the recessive phenotype. This is inbreeding, so two closely related individuals. It doesn't have to be siblings, okay? But it could be siblings. It could be um, parents and children. It could be grandparents, uncles. Closely related individuals breeding together is inbreeding. Outbreeding is when you breed with a non-closely related individual. Inbreeding increases homozygosity. Again, that's because it's much more likely that you're going to have similar genotypes and therefore you're going to end up with uh, homozygous offspring. It doesn't have to be homozygous uh, recessive. It could also be homozygous dominant. But especially if you keep going for many generations of inbreeding, uh, the number of genes which end up homozygous increases. Now this can be a good thing because it means that if um, there is a characteristic which is recessive, um, which has arisen by chance mutation in that particular family, then by inbreeding, by continuing to breed closely related individuals, you are likely to retain that desirable characteristic. However, because a lot of the time um, recessive characteristics are disadvantageous, you get something called inbreeding depression. So this 
genotype here, this, this doesn't have to be a, ne have a negative effect, but diseases which are caused by recessive alleles are more common than diseases that are caused by dominant alleles. So if you're increasing homozygosity, you're increasing the chance of recessive characteristics being expressed, and a lot of those will have negative effects. So inbreeding depression is a problem with inbreeding. Outbreeding is good because you can combine traits. So we're only showing one gene here, but of course this individual um, has got genes for many different characteristics, um, as does this individual. So it's possible that you can take an individual which has a trait such as um, being able to uh, withstand frost, so let's say it's a crop plant, it can withstand frost, and you could breed it with a non-related individual which has um, a trait for being able to produce a lot of fruit. And you breed them together and you get both of those characteristics which are both beneficial. So you're combining traits. When you do outbreeding, as you can see here, you get more heterozygosity. So inbreeding increases homozygosity because individuals have got similar genotypes. Outbreeding increases heterozygosity because individuals have got dissimilar genotypes. So this is uh, good because it, it gives us something called hybrid vigor. We'll look at that in a second. However, the problem is that you end up, um, if you're doing lots of outbreeding, you end up with genetic variation. The individuals are all different. They're heterozygous. All the different genes would be heterozygous. One individual is genetically very different to another. And if you are breeding, uh, let's say you're breeding crop plants, that's a problem. Because you want all of your plants to be as similar as possible so that they um, take the same amount of time to grow, so that they're going to reach the same height. Um, you know, you can harvest them at the same time. Farmers would actually want genetically similar plants or animals. So genetic variation is actually a negative thing when you're doing selective breeding. Okay, so we sort of mentioned this already, the idea that inbreeding um, leads to a reduced fitness. So if we have um, a plant here, a maize plant, if you um, do inbreeding, so you breed it with closely related individuals or even with plants you can self-pollinate, which is a form of inbreeding, then you end up with uh, offspring, which in this example here we, we're showing the, the height represents how fit they are. So they don't grow as well. And if you do that for another generation of inbreeding, again, the plants don't grow as well. So over many generations, you end up with shorter and shorter plants. They don't grow as well. They don't produce as much um, maize in this example, so not as much corn. And as we said, the reason for this is to do with homozygosity. So let's say this is a sort of selection of uh, five genes, and you can see that some of them are heterozygous, some are homozygous. As you inbreed, we know that we get more homozygosity. So this second generation here, you can see that we've now got more uh, genes which are homozygous. Eventually, you get to the point where all or almost all of the genes are homozygous. So we've got increased homozygosity. And the reason that causes reduced fitness is because some of them are recessive alleles which have a negative effect, but of course they are only expressed in the homozygous form. So originally, this individual here, it had the recessive D allele, but it was heterozygous for D. So this negative, um, the effect of negative effect of this allele was not expressed. However, now we're homozygous and we're homozygous uh, recessive, and the negative effect of this allele is expressed. And then you do it again, and we've now got two um, negative um, alleles or uh, recessive alleles which have negative effects which are now expressed. So this is why increased homozygosity can lead to reduced fitness. Okay, so um, hybridization then. So hybridization is, uh, is done quite often in selective breeding. Here is our maize plant and this is what we call an inbred line. So this individual is quite short, 
it's not particularly strong it doesn't grow very well um, and it's but it's been inbred so the reason that this is quite a small and not very good plant is because it has been produced by many generations of inbreeding so this plant is very homozygous so here is an example of what the genotype might be I'm going to hybridize it with this plant over here as you can see also doesn't look particularly strong this is in bread line two so another plant which has been produced by lots of different breeding and again you can see that it's very homozygous if you compare the two genotypes though you can see they're not the same so for gene A for example this plant is homozygous dominant and this plant is homozygous recessive so they're two different lines they're both ho very homozygous uh, but they're, they're not identical so they're not related so these are two unrelated inbred plants. Now what's interesting is if you breed these two together what you end up is something called an F1 hybrid so the first generation hybrid and this plant ends up growing tall strong it's what we call a vigorous plant okay it grows very well and it grows way better than either of the two parent plants and if you think about what would happen with these two homozygous plants when they reproduce, you're going to end up with a plant which ha is heterozygous for most or all of its genes. Because we take dominant allele from here, the recessive allele from here. It's not necessarily going to be heterozygous for all of its genes, but there's going to be a big um, increase in heterozygosity. And two things happen. So as we said, it grows very strongly. This is something called hybrid vigor. Now the reasons why this happens are uh, it's, a, it's a little bit unclear, scientists. There's several possible theories. One of the possible reasons is, of course, because if it's heterozygous for most of its genes, then any harmful recessive alleles will not be expressed. So it's very it's vigorous and because we're going from um, homozygous parents that means that every individual that is um, produced from these two parents from these two inbred lines is going to be genetically identical or very very similar at least so they're going to be heterozygous and they're going to have really really similar genotypes so we've got this idea of genetic uniformity so any if you have inbred line one inbred line two breed them together all of the offspring are going to be um, heterozygous for a lot of their genes they're going to be therefore genetically uniform and they are going to show hybrid vigor and that is how hybridization works in plants take a high inbred line another inbred line and breed them together to make your hybrid okay that's all for now thank you very much